Please join us in August of 2019 for our Elongated Skulls Tour of Peru. Today we're at the Lima Airport heading to Cusco where we're going to look at ancient Inca sites as well as pre-Inca megalithic works. So here we are in the tarmac at Lima, about ready to take the one hour flight to Cusco. And there are flights approximately every hour during the daytime. So here we are, we've arrived in Cusco and we're going to catch a taxi and hit the streets around the Plaza de Armas, which is the center of the ancient Inca aspect of Cusco. The population of Cusco is approximately 500,000 to 1 million people, but the megalithic and Inca core is actually quite small. It's about six blocks by eight blocks. So we're now driving through modern day Cusco, approaching the oldest part of the city. And that's exactly where we are right now. So you can see some colonial Spanish buildings. And now we're looking at the Coricancha, which is a church, but was the center of the Inca world 500 plus years ago. So this is the actual Plaza de Armas. The San Cristobal church is in the background and Sacsayhuaman, the giant fortress, so-called, is up behind. And this is the Cathedral of Cusco. And it gives you a good view of the entire Plaza de Armas with this classic Inca statue. And now we're going to start exploring, looking for megalithic aspects here in the ancient city of Cusco. And that's exactly what we're looking at. This is a megalithic work. You see how uh, incredibly tight fitting the stonework is. And then this wall on the right as well. It's megalithic, not in terms of huge uh, stones, but the precision and the antiquity are quite remarkable. This is definitely pre-Inca. And we contrast that here with colonial Spanish construction utilizing older Inca and other stones. And then this actually once again is the much older megalithic aspect of Cusco. Now contrast that with this. Again, this is colonial Spanish. You see the concrete, you see the very uh, big gaps. This again is colonial Spanish, utilizing older stones from Cusco. And then this, this could be ancient megalithic or it could be Inca. It's hard to tell. Some of the Inca work was actually quite fine, like this, maybe. And again, you can see every stone is a different shape and size, but then contrast it with what you're looking at on the right-hand side. This is the much older megalithic work. Again, you see every stone is a different shape and size and super tight fitting construction. This is a granite, so it could not have been shaped with the Inca bronze tools. And the wall is called the Inca Roca Wall. Now here, this is likely Inca reconstruction using older stones. And contrast that with this astonishing precision. Now the stone in the center there, that is what the stone actually looks like at the quarry itself. So it appears 
that the ancient megalithic builders altered the nature of the stone, possibly with heat or some other kind of force, because it's much too homogeneous, uh, much more than it should be, and it contrasts greatly with the stone in the quarry. Now we're looking at an Inca wall, you can see, relatively crude. And then this is the Inca Roca wall, and look at the repair work above that was probably done during Inca times. The upper stone is smaller and it's basalt, whereas the lower stone is more of a granite. Now here, this is another one of the Inca Roca walls. Again, very, very tight fitting work. And so tight fitting that you can see calcium carbonate deposits from rainwater that's basically locked the stone together. Not even water can now penetrate these joints. Astonishing precision that, again, could not have been done by the Inca. It was obviously a far more technologically sophisticated civilization that existed in Cusco prior to Inca times. Now here again you see the very rough work. This again is Inca reconstruction using older stones. And again the super tight fitting pre-Inca work. Look at the curvature and also look at the glow on the bottom um, area of the join. Very polished looking, almost like it has been vitrified with heat. Still trying to figure out how this construction was done. Obviously not with hand tools. We're now walking down another one of Cusco streets and again this is pre-Inca construction. Every stone is a different shape and size, and each one interlocks with the other. The wall is approximately three feet or one meter deep. Perfect fitting from the front to the back. And now we're continuing walking. We're actually going south. And again, this wall continues on and on. It's in fact two blocks long and two blocks in the other direction. So in total, eight blocks in size. Now look at, again at this polished surface there. It looks vitrified. And con contrast that with this, which is likely Inca reconstruction using older stones once again of different shapes and sizes and composition and here again we have another surface that looks vitrified or heat treated or some other force involved in altering the nature of the stone itself what's also intriguing about these ancient works is that in general the corners are curved why that is i don't really know but that's a common thing when you look at the uh, ancient constructions. And now this, in contrast, is Inca work. As you can see, it's not very tight fitting. There is some mortar um, or clay used as mortar. And now we're going to look at another Inca construction. As you can see on the right side, relatively crude. And the Inca tried to make the fronts of the stones fit tight, but look how the joint spreads out backwards. I think that was a way that the Inca were trying to make their stone work as high quality as the megalithic work that they found. There again, you see tight fitting in the front and the gap opens as it goes in towards the wall. 
Now this green stone you're looking at is the same stone of the Inca Roca wall, but you see that its composition is completely different from the glossy surfaces of the megalithic Inca Roca wall. And then this is likely a pre-Inca construction, but the weathering is very strange, almost like it was struck with some kind of heat in the distant past. And now look at this. This is quite obvious. The green stone is megalithic. The work on the left could possibly be Inca rebuilding. And then the green stone transitions into this very rough looking work that you're looking at now. Again, the transition between megalithic and Inca. And now compare these two walls, Inca on the left, megalithic on the right. The building on the right is called the Coricacha. And you can see, once again, astonishing precision. You can't fit a human hair in the joints. And this wall, again, is about a meter or three feet deep. Perfect from the front to the back. And then also notice this curious glow of the horizontal joints. Was this again heat treating that was done by the megalithic builders in order to be, uh, be able to make the joints fit so tightly? And now once again we're going to be transitioning from the pre-Inca to Inca reconstruction. Once again, the Inca used the stone of the damaged pre-Inca wall and put those stones back into place, but they found this area of wall relatively intact, earthquake proof as well. Now we're inside the Coricancha and once again look at the incredible precision of the joinery. Once again, you can't fit a human hair in any of these joints, or at least many of them. And this is basalt stone, so it's very hard. And this is more of the pre-Inca construction in the Coricancha. And now we're moving into the central courtyard of the Coricancha. And we're going to be looking at a giant tub or vessel of some kind, once again made out of basalt. And this too is very likely to be pre-Inca in construction. And we also have evidence of drills being used to make those two vertical holes and that horizontal one. And still in the Coricancha, we're going to see some of these curious knobs or projections. Their actual function is still unknown. There are several different theories about what they were for, but they certainly weren't for assisting in raising the stones up because the ones above don't have the knobs. In this case, only the lower ones. And then here we have Spanish Reconstruction, you see the cement, very sloppy work, and then this, if you can see it, is the joinery of the pre-Inca civilization. It's so fine, you can almost not see it. So there you see the join on one side. That kind of work would be very difficult to do even in modern times. And now we have more of these strange knobs or projections. And notice they appear, or it appears as if the surfaces were melted. Because you see the sheen on them. Again, very mysterious, very curious, still not solved. And here, another couple of examples.
or in fact, we're going to be looking at three of them. Notice the shiny surface of the knob as compared to the flat surface. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you want to learn more, here's my book, one of my books on Amazon.com. And if you're interested, this is our tour in August, Elongated Skulls of Peru. And in September, we're going to be exploring ancient Turkey, including Gobekli Tepe. Thank you for watching.